as traders, oftentimes we are asking ourselves, WTF is going on in the markets or at the charts? And uh, this is a chance for everyone to get to know that we're all in this together. We face the same kind of challenges and battles, and uh, you're not alone. Uh, I'm Michael Bookbinder from Scandinavian Capital Markets, and today we are joined by Hugh Kimura from Trading Heroes and Paul Hayes from Click Hello. Algo. Um, right. Hugh is the founder of Trading Heroes and a trading blogger, mentor, and performance coach. He launched the Trading Heroes site in 2007. It's one of the longest running trading education websites. Before launching Trading Heroes, Hugh worked at a hedge fund in California. Hugh doesn't just sell courses, he helps his students tailor their own trading strategy, which fits their objectives, personalities, lifestyle, and risk tolerance. Where most educators just sell techniques that work for them, he recognizes that everyone has a different personality. Hugh's education is in the field of cell and molecular biology. Damn. Paul is the founder of Quick Algo, an algo trading software development company specializing in custom indicators, tools, and bots for C-Trader. He launched the company in 2015. Click Algo is an e-shop where you can buy various widgets, indicators, and automated strategies for C-Trader, as well as programming courses uh, and learning. Although Click Algo specializes in C-Trader tools, products for other trading platforms like NinjaTrader are also available too. Paul has a bachelor's of science in software engineering and has over 20 years of software development experience and offered IT consulting to Intel and on government projects. Both of our guests build tools to help traders improve their trading capabilities, but in slightly different ways. Hugh helps traders conceive a trading methodology that fits their psychology, and Paul helps traders automate their trading strategy to reduce human influence on trading decisions. Let's get into it. Okay. Uh, I, guess, <laughs> I guess this goes to both of you. Uh, you guys can pick who starts. How did you first get involved with trading? You can go first, Hugh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess it, I read a, the Market Wizards book, and that was how it started. It was, uh, I think, maybe senior year in college. So I uh, read the book, and then I wanted some more, so I kept on reading. And like I didn't do so well my last year of school, but uh, uh, that's how I got into it. And then from there, I, out of college, I got the job at the hedge fund um, as a trading assistant and kind of took it from there. Sweet. Okay, cool. And on oh, my turn now? Yeah, your yep. turn. Okay, yeah, okay. So um, I think I didn't really get into trading as a trader. It was more the fact that um, I was looking at um, a niche market to use the skills that I've had previously, right, in software. Um, so the Forex market or the trading market was something I thought would be a good idea that I could apply my, my um, sales and development skills to to start the company. So I actually traded myself for one year just to understand what the traders would go through. And then started building the company around it and then started pulling people around me that um, have more trading experience and more developers and more of a support team. So we're focusing more, more probably 50% support and 50% um, creating tools for developers right now. Excellent. Cool. I guess I'll uh, kind of point this to Hugh and if you have anything to add, Paul, just jump in there. But okay. uh, with regards to a trading strategy, um, can it work for all situations and all trades, or how, how do the trading strategies work? Oh, it's just or, manual, manual trading, is it? Well, so yeah, we good. can do both ways. Okay, so, oh, you go first again, Hugh. Okay, yeah, I'll take the manual and you can take the automated. Okay. Um, from the manual standpoint, like, of course not. There's nothing that works all the time. Um, you're gonna have to figure out what market conditions work for you and what, work, what works with your personality, right? What, um, what do you feel comfortable with? And it really comes down to how do you see the market and how do you see the world? Uh, if it, you're really actually trading your perspective and not really a trading system, you're trading something that you can see as an advantage and um, um, that, that advantage might be something that works a lot of the time. But um, in most cases, it's something where you're looking for a very specific uh, market condition and you're looking to take advantage of that. I guess what would be some market conditions that are out there that traders can look for or identify? Oh yeah, sure. Like, um, I guess two of the popular ones are like trend trading, right? So you're looking for a strong trend, you're looking for some, maybe some support and resistance, or you're looking for a moving average to play off of. And, um, 
uh, you can trade that or you could look for like a counter trend move where there's exhaustion. So you're looking for uh, the move to end and you're looking for it to turn around and go back in the other direction. How do you find out when, what's exhausted? Uh, that's that's the hard part, right? Like so that comes down to the testing. You you want to test um, different strategies, different ways people look at things, and um, see what works for you. So you can maybe do something as simple as like a two bar pattern, like an outside outside bar or like a pin bar or something like that, or something a little more complex, maybe like a rounded rounded pattern or uh, something like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, because that's interesting because a lot of um traders that come to us to have systems automated don't really have a, a fully defined strategy. They have an idea. Um, mm. But if, if somebody was using you and they had a strategy that they use, do, do you actually document your strategies? Do you actually, you obviously have a course, don't you? And it's documented the different types of strategies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people go into the course and they, um, they have a strategy that they want to test and I help them test it out and get the stats on it or whatever. Ah, cool. Because because all we would do is people would contact us and we have a process that they follow through. Um, we would prefer people to actually provide us with a document, some form of document mm. with the strategy written down. So all the trade rules and risk management rules and settings. And once they have this document, which is like the blueprint, um, from that, that can be then my, uh, converted into an automated system or a semi-automated system um, mm. for the trader to use. So that that is one of our biggest issues anyway, is people not actually documenting fully the mm. strategies. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's actually kind of hard to turn some of these discretionary strategies into like a, a hard coded um, automated strategy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you have trade yeah. rules, do you? You have like a list of trade rules yeah. um, that they follow yeah. in risk management. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, your job, Paul, is to be somewhat of a mind reader and uh, figure out what people are, <laughs> are actually asking for. Sometimes, some, some, some types of traders will actually provide a very well documented strategy. So it, they cover everything from risk management to trend, uh, trade rules for exiting trades, entering trade, entering trade, and stuff. And these are the most easiest ones to actually convert into an automated system. The worst ones are the ones where um, are very woolly, sort of not fully detailed. And that can cause issues in the development process. Yeah, like I just want to make money in the market. So when it yeah, goes up, yeah. I want to buy. And when it goes down, I want to sell. So can you yeah. program that for me? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's some like that. <laughs> not, not all of them. Most of them are pretty good. But we have to keep asking for more information. I guess uh, for Paul, um, can you just, uh, uh, do I say bot or trading strategy or program? What, what, what's the I'd, terminology? I'd like to call it. The automate an automated trading system, or so an ATS, because obviously with MetaTrader they call it an EA, because it's because MetaTrader is so popular, the whole market is now calling any automated trading system they're calling it an EA, and it's not. It's just a just for MetaTrader and C traders they call their C bots, but I think the industry name is a mechanical trading system or a, a, a automated trading system. Okay, so a, I'll use ATS is better. ATS, yeah, it's short. ATS, it's much easier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, automated trading system ATS. So can you just buy an ATS and run it? Uh, or can uh, one ATS work the same for everyone, or how, how does that work? Um, so, or, or a semi-automated system might be something really simple, like um, exiting a trade on a Friday at 4 p.m. or something. So that's a very basic example. So the trader is not going to sit there and wait till 4 p.m. on a Friday to close the trade. So they would automate that task, and it's very simple. And you can have very complex or trading systems that have higher precision trader entries. On certain, on certain data conditions that a trader wouldn't have the speed to do. So, but in general, um, what you build would be for a certain uh, circumstances. It wouldn't be to use on all symbols or all for all people. Well, no, it would be for all people. It all depends on what the strategy is, I suppose, what they're trying to achieve. Because we've got a question coming in over here already. Nice, I like that. Um, uh, Milda Tizina asks, what's the first step for making my own uh, strategy? Well, that would be one for Hugh, I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, kind of both of us, right? I think. Well, right. first of all, you have to see if the strategy works, right? If there's some sort of um, an advantage, and uh, then you would look for, okay, can it be automated? And that's where you would pass it off to Paul, right? Ah, How would you, you go from there, Paul? Oh, sorry. Yeah, was, was she asking if it can be automa an automated strategy or just a manual strategy? Well, what's the first step for making my own strategy? So I'm, I'm kind of get based on what Hugh is saying. It sounds like first you have to kind of come up with an idea of what you're looking to do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. All right, so first you have to define. Okay, 
do I want to trade within uh, uh, do I want my strategy to be based on a trending market or uh, or a breakout market? And then you would have to kind of yeah. build yeah, it so, around that. So they would need to actually create a blueprint of their strategy. So they, it needs to be documented. And these, mm -hmm. these the actual phase of creating their strategy document is the most important phase. Because <clears throat> if they make small mistakes or they leave a lot of things out, then it can cause a lot of problems. It could cost them more money. So if they want to make their own one, if they want to code it themselves, the first thing is to create a strategy document. And then from that document, they can start creating their own. They'd have to learn coding for one, um, and they'd have to do that. I think that, or they could ask a development company like us to build it for them or another company. Um, but if they want to automate their system um, and they got no programming experience, then yeah, they need to use another company really. Yeah, I so, think it's important to say too that even with a manual strategy, you really have to have that blueprint because you want to be able to iterate, right? So, yeah, a common thing in manual in manual uh, testing is that somebody tests something halfway and then they change the rules halfway and then they test it again and they're like, oh, this works pretty well, or this doesn't work very well at all. But you tested two different set of rules. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really important to have that that blueprint, like Paul says. Yeah, it's, just, it's called regression testing in software. So you, if you make a, a, a um, if you do a minor change to your strategy, you'd have to test the whole strategy again, because that minor yeah. change might have side effects on all the other parts of the system. So this blueprint is very important because then they can start um, making changes to the blueprint, applying that to the code, and then you have like a round trip sort of development process to come up with a, the most perfect system, I suppose. So it sounds like you got to start yourself having some sort of idea you can come to a mentor like you and kind of bounce off your strategies and uh and kind of pick their brains and uh, get some insight and then you got a paul over there to program it and make it happen if that's what you, if you want to automate that hmm. and uh yeah. okay and then uh, for you uh what sort of details are covered in a trading journal and uh what conclusions should traders be looking uh, to get from them or or insight. Yeah, sure. I mean, a, a trading journal is really important. And I guess it really makes a difference if you're manual trading or if you're uh, automated trading, right? So for a manual trading uh, journal, which I do more of, um, you're going to have like screenshots of the before and after. Uh, did, did you take a good setup on that technical analysis entry or did you uh, just try to enter whenever did you have FOMO did you just try to chase the the breakout or whatever and then um, writing down uh, your emotions that happened during the trade you know were you uh, nervous and you got out early or did you follow the system and did you you know get get out when you're supposed to so that's really important with the trading journal hmm. I know you've been working on some sort of trading journal is there some yeah. other trade where traders can go find that yeah, it's um, Razor Journal. I call it I call it Razor Journal, so you can cut through all of the um, all of the fluff out there and really get down to what is, you know, helping your trading and what's hurting your trading. And uh, we launched the first version last year, and uh, that's been going pretty well so far. That's good. Sounds good like idea. The, yeah. Sounds like the biggest part of trading is people's emotions, right? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and even in even in automated trading, there's some emotions involved, right, Paul? Yeah, definitely. Like even the matter, even if you have an automated system, people will still go and push the buttons with their fingers. You know, they still get yeah. they'll because you do need some human interaction with any trading system at some point. You know, something in the markets might just go crazy, and the humans need to intervene. Yeah, sure. and uh, I, I guess that's. The, kind of the hard part is when do you have the human intervention and when do you just have hands off and it's always hindsight that's uh yeah kind of is, is the winner over there yeah practice yeah. i guess that's when you use yeah. a trade journal figure write down your emotions why did i intervene why did i uh why did i not intervene yeah. and, it's a good idea yeah and then yeah. and then you can i guess then it's all about chance <laughs> how many times did you intervene and you won or how many times did you intervene and you lost <laughs> Yeah. Flip a coin today. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? But I think as, like, as long as you have your risk management in place, you should, I think you should always trust the system and your strategy. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. Cool. Yep. I, uh, shooting at Paul. Uh, out of all the tools and widgets you make for traders, um, 
which of them do you think helps them follow their trading strategy and maintain accountability? Um, we've got a few, mostly the risk management tools. So any kind of risk management tools, which um, I don't know, for example, would um, stop there, would, would stop. How can I say this? The only thing you can do for manual, you're talking about fair manual trading, yeah? So any tools that can help them manually trade? Yeah. Yeah, or, we've got one We've got one called an alarm, a uh, guardian angel or something like that. And that does various things like send telegram messages, sends emails, does pop-up windows to tell them that, you know, trades are at risk or your drawdowns drop below a certain percent. We've got like a dashboard that will tell you when your drawdowns um, get into a point that's dangerous. And also you can also select some settings so that it'll automatically close those positions um, when your account or your balance size drops below a certain value. So just to protect your account in general from being completely burnt out, um, you can put these risk limiters in place. And we've got some other tools that actually do um, just automated trailing stops or automated break evens or um, if a trade start, you get like runaway trades, anybody would have a trade and it would start going a bit crazy. I think humans just need some kind of um, response on the screen to say you need to stop. You know, but even if you have that, even if you had this sort of thing and you even shut down their PC, they'll find some way of booting their PC up and start <laughs> continuing that trade. So maybe, maybe you need to like turn the computer, turn the human off possibly. Yeah. I think what we need to do is program one of those dog collars then and zap them. Yeah, yeah, zap them and they'll try and trade again. Yeah, good idea. Ooh, no. Like, like okay. the Homer Simpson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, shooting at uh, Hugh. Backtesting is a really important component of automated of automating a trading strategy, um, but how can manual traders use backtesting to their advantage? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a similar concept. Like you're just practicing um, on historical data, so you're looking for a particular chart pattern, and in a similar way, you can get statistics on it, and uh, that can help you move forward because you can say, okay, this pattern has a 60% chance of winning, and um, I lost four in a row yesterday, but uh, is that within my parameters? And if it is, then you don't have to get down about it, right? You can just move forward. And um, this works if you have a very specific set of rules and uh, you just want to test it out and see how it works. And I guess for Paul, like, uh, I've seen a lot of strategies that are back tested, but those look so good when you curve fit everything, but yeah, I, I guess there's the going live and there's going and there's back testing. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of theories around back testing, and I have my own theories regarding it. Um, with an automated system, the idea is if you are going to leave it running, is to have the best possible chance or highest probability that those trades are going to be successful and your risk is going to be low. If you didn't do any kind of op um, optimization and you just ran the bot, you'd have a very low probability chance. So the idea is to, to improve your probability as high as possible. Then you use the robot will run, and then you still need to manually intervene and watch the trades, look at the support and resistance levels. Any kind of logic that the automated system doesn't have, like um, news releases, you know, they can have news release events, you know, capture those, but you do need some human interaction. Anyway, the whole idea is that back testing um, is to get it as low as possible, like a 1% drawdown if you can, over say a one year period, and then continually optimize that on a regular basis to keep those parameters optimized for the current sort of market trend. Um, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure about back testing 20 years back and then expecting it to continually run because um, the markets change all the time. So the data changes. All right. Well, uh, there's another question that's coming in. There's a few questions that came in, but that I think they're asking about what your thoughts on the market are. And I, I don't think we should touch those based on that. Uh, uh, I think those should be maybe handled afterwards if, uh, if you want to reach okay. out to anyone. But cool. Paco is asking, can anyone recommend uh, some free backtesting software for a grid ATS? <laughs> um, yep, yeah, CTrader. It's included in the platform. I'm sure at MetaTrader as well. So. Most trading platforms have backtesting software that you could uh, run. So wherever you get the trading system from, um, if it's to run on CTrader, then you can use the CTrader's automate window and run a backtest. And I guess uh, in terms with backtesting, uh, I think a lot of traders are going to say, oh, I ran my test and I backtested it. And, uh, and then when it goes live, they probably have like a, 
there's a there's a reality uh, check that comes into play when it's like you know you can look at everything when everything's calm and uh, and always in the history but when everything's happening in real time stuff doesn't always go your way um, i guess what kind of advice do you have for Ooh. someone who's might be <clears throat> can, I, can i just quickly do this one here because you, yeah, you need to, yeah sorry you need to run it on a demo account uh, to prove that that system works and that you fully understand all the settings for that trading system and all the market events that might happen. So you need to run it on a demo account with, with uh, fresh data coming in. So, you know, simulating a live conditions, not 100%, but as close as you can. And then you can actually um, see how you manage those trades yourself, see how the, tr the system opens and closes trades, manages your risk, and that uh, you don't miss anything out. And then when you're fully confident, you know, after many months probably, that you, you feel that this system is, you work together with this system to, to get uh, more successful trades, then I would actually go for a live trading system, uh, live account, sorry. I like that. So just because, you're, just because your program's ready, you should test it before you go live with it. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And on, on the manual side also, I think it's a very similar thing, right? You have to test it in a demo account over several months and um, and then it comes down to your journal, like what um, what things are different between your back testing and your live trading uh, when you're trading manual, and you'll never get the exact same results. So you're going to have to figure out, okay, is there some emotion involved? Am I trading at the wrong times of day? Is uh, am I actually following the rules? Um, stuff like that. So that's where the journal really comes into play. Can I just say one little thing? Um, what what Hugh does by creating these. Um or helping people create their own or use their own strategies, what would be good for an automated system would be to take away the kind of basic stuff from the, from the manual trading system and automate that so that the person already knows how to use that strategy, strategy manually and they, they've got some success out of it, but they just want to take away a lot of the repetitive tasks that an automated system can do or, or um, make their entries and exits more um, sharper, might, a better, better entry signals, points, sorry. And then also add the risk management on top of that. Um, say they're away from their computer at night and they've got a trade open. They know that an automated system is going to manage their risk while they're sleeping. So a hybrid system between knowing the strategy and an automated system is probably one of the better ways of using an ATS. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like some people think you need to automate the whole thing, but in reality, a lot, most people would benefit from just automating the entry or automating the exit or automating the uh, the risk management or one or two of those things at, at the same time. So yeah, yeah totally agree. Yeah, I I, re I remember the, the, a lot of those sleepless nights and uh, hearing those alerts come on, bing 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 bing. Like, <laughs> I, I don't have any kids yet, but I could probably wake up uh, just hearing a little noise. I'd be like, like a like a dart up like, like that. But that's kind of what brings like burnout for traders is uh, those sleepless nights and all that stress. And if you can alleviate a lot of that stress, a lot of that uncertainty. You can allow yourself to stay in the market longer, uh, be more profitable, and have some sanity in a life. I think. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, totally. That would an automated system would massively help there because you could be a, you could be asleep knowing that your account is protected to a certain amount, and you know you could be asleep knowing that the trade will close in profit when it gets. I know you can put stop losses and take profits in, um, but you can put an additional logic in there to manage more profit or loss, reduce loss. Yeah, yeah. trailing stops is a good one too. Well, the questions keep flying in over here. Um, any quick quant tips for the average person um, to perform backtesting as an added layer of DD? I think that's due diligence, but that could be also be drawdown. Could be drawdown. What's the know, question I'm, again? I'm guessing over here. Um, <laughs> any, qu any quick quant tips for the average person to perform backtesting as an added layer of DD? Probably due diligence. Um, I don't know really. I don't know that one. <laughs> if it's drawdown, I know that um, if they, if it's drawdown, then um, they could easily um, look at the drawdown for each um, back test that they do, and they can reduce their lot size or the position size or anything like that if they want to reduce it. But I don't know about due diligence. Don't know that one. Maybe who knows the answer to that? No, one <laughs> stuff is all you, man. Oh God, damn, damn. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure of the answer to that one. Can you rephrase that in a different way, maybe? Yeah, let's see if they come back. Let's see if they come back. <laughs> More clarity for that one. 
Um, well, I guess let's uh, continue on. Um, for Paul, what are some of the most common add-ons traders are looking for? Um, fully automated strategies or tools to assist them with manual trading? I think we kind of touched on that, but yeah, yeah. Um, people are always looking for um, assistance. Well, most traders, I feel, um, think that they have a fully automated system. Um, and even though, yeah, so a lot of people feel that the system is going to be fully automated and they can just leave it running and, and it will just open and close trades and they'll make a profit. And trying to, I've got some things on our website to try and educate, educate trainers of the reality of uh, the cold hard facts of algorithmic trading. Um, and it isn't quite that. I think it would be really nice if a lot of people in the market who knew, knew people coming into the market had some information that actually showed them the, the reality behind it and what they need to do instead, which it probably is learn a strategy using one of Hugh's courses, to be honest, but plug your course there, to actually do trading first, mm -hmm. learn how to trade first. Once they've got um, trading experience after a few years, then they can start looking into um, using um, trading systems, automated trading systems to assist their manual trading. Um, I know for a f I know that banks and brokers and people have certain high frequency trading systems. They certain have algorithms that Quants developed that actually um, work under certain market conditions, and that is possible. But um, these guys are continually developing and working on these, and they've got the best brains in the industry. So most automated trading systems, you do need to um, have um, trading experience as well. Trading experience. Wow. I thought all you just needed to do was follow Wall Street bets, and you'd be making money. But. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> is is that a trading strategy? <laughs> it's a type of strategy, yeah. You just Could follow be. someone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope you get in early and get out and get out first, right? I'd never I'd never trade again. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> has someone asked uh, has someone asked you to de develop something to uh give them signals based on, uh, off of uh internet chatter? Uh yeah, twi twi uh doing trades off of Twitter has been around a long time now. Um, so listening to Twitter tweets and picking up certain keywords and then um, using that as an, an, an additional signal on your trades and any Telegram groups, any kind of um, social media platforms, that's been around a long time now. People are doing that. And most retail traders can do that as well. And uh, I guess uh, both of you kind of focus on different platforms. Um, uh, Hugh, the tools and content you provide revolve around MT4, and MT5. Um, what makes you choose uh, those platforms? Um, that's kind of well. MT4, MT4 was the best trading platform, charting platform for forex, and that's where I focus. So uh, that's where I put most of my energy in terms of tools. Well, Paul, Paul might have something to say about that. What, what attracts Paul to C Trader, <laughs> and um, uh, why have you focused on C Trader rather than? Uh, all these uh, people who want EAs for MT4 and M well, yeah, MT4. ATS, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a few. There's a few reasons. One is with MT4, I would have been a small fish in a big pond. With C Trader, I could be a bigger fish in a smaller pond because it's a niche. It's just starting to be uh, more popular. C Trader does have a lot of potential and it is growing fast. Meta Trader is huge. It has a lot, a lot of followers and a lot of add-ons and tools like that. And mostly C Trader um, is for the for the actual algorithmic code that it uses, Microsoft C Sharp. So I've been coding C Sharp for many years, and you've got the whole power of the .NET, platform, uh, .NET framework. So it has got some powerful tools that you can use for this sort of industry. Well, as someone who runs a brokerage, uh, I guess comparing the MT4 with the C Trader, um, uh, we if someone if a, if a broker is running like a, a market making kind of uh, uh, a desk or something like that, the MT4 gives them room to wiggle around and mess with traders, whereas uh, C Trader, their motto is uh, trader first, and uh, they're very strict with uh, price feeds coming in and how things can be modified or not modified. Mm. So I think from a trader yeah, perspective, uh, C Trader is uh, hopefully going to start to make waves and uh, build quite a nice audience because it's, they're going to get a much, I think, a little bit uh, fairer kind of playing field with uh, in terms of trading. Um, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. And uh, I guess uh, I got to thank <laughs> Hugh, Hugh for uh, introducing me to TradingView back when he was in Sweden and we uh, got to meet up. He was like, yeah, I really like charting from TradingView. You got to get your charts up here uh, and connect your platforms to be able to trade from there. And something we're talking to Paul about, seeing how we can uh, play around with uh, some of the tools he built to kind of get um, 
uh, trading from CTrader into the trading view charts. Uh, but that's something we'll we'll talk about offline, Paul. But okay, uh, what are your what are your favorite features uh, with the, from trading view for for both of you? Yeah, go for it, Paul. Oh, okay. Um, I like trading view. <laughs> It uses HTML5, isn't it? So it's a web-based sort of um, trading platform. It has a very rich charting capabilities, like very, very rich charting capabilities. There's a lot of things you can do on it. Um, and from what people have been telling me, they like the um, order management of CTrader and the brokers they can use with CTrader. So um, trading view, I'm not sure 100% how um, complex an algorithm you can do an automated trading system. I know they've got their own sort of um, system for doing that. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked into it too deeply. But, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty much rudimentary, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, it's more. I think it's very good for manual trading. Um, it's got, like I said, great charting capabilities. But I'm not sure mm -hmm. about algorithmic. Cool. Yeah, um, for me, uh, I like the bar replay. I think that's a cool feature in terms of like practicing manual strategies. You can just rewind it, replay it, and um, that's a good way to review your trades and also uh, practice your strategies. Um, and I also like the tagging. I think that's kind of a you know, really simple tool that they have, but when you can tag like your open trades, your closed trades, and those get put on a specific list that you can look at later, I think that's, um, that's a really nice feature to have. Oh, cool. Didn't know that. Yeah, so I guess it sounds like it's great for having those trade journal exercises. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Paul mentioned uh, different languages over there. I guess what are, for for Paul, what are the different programming lang languages across the board that you've encountered um, in the trading industry? Um, C sharp. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> out there. There's a lot out there like Python and uh, other languages like F sharp and R, statistical R. There's a lot of languages um, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're using a lot of mathematics and stuff like that. Um, a lot of Microsoft's languages now, you can use a lot of Microsoft uh, mathematical packages for doing very uh, in, you know, deep sort of statistics and stuff like that. But one of the easiest ones to learn for traders is probably C Sharp. It's quite easy to learn. So if you're a new somebody learning, wants to learn a language for programming, then that would probably be an easy one to learn. I, I think MetaTrader's own bespoke language is also quite an easy one to learn. So if it's people that are retail traders and they're looking at going into the industry, they need to... They need to one, choose a language which is well documented with lots of examples on the web. And they also need a lot of educational material. Plus it has to be quite easy to pick up and create their first system. Well, I'm just learning Spanish. I'm on level three of Duolingo. So oh, nice. I'll, 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 leave the, <laughs> awesome. I'll leave, hola, como estas? I'll, I'll leave the, the trading programming to, to you, Paul. All right. Um, um, so Paul, if a trader wants to automate a trading strategy, what steps do they need to take and how do they define their strategy? And I guess I'll probably uh, point that to Hugh afterwards about defining strategies. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, they need to uh, they need to actually provide a document, preferably. Sometimes, if it's a very bas basic indicator or system, we accept like an email with just the trade rules written down. Um, so this is we're still trying to come up with the most perfect way of doing it so that the customer. Um, gets what they want. A lot of it is, an, it's, okay, so the idea is we found out throughout the years, five years of doing this, there's been a lot of problems with um, traders um, finding the right way of actually helping these people that don't have maybe the, the right um, education of creating project specifications with all the details in and actually what they expect from that. So we're putting more, more systems in place now to make them more aware of what happens. You know, like they get their first the first sort of beta release, and then from that beta release, they'll test it, and they might find because we, the developer, our side can't cannot sit and test it for weeks and weeks, so there will be bugs. So the whole idea is they will create a product description with as much detail as possible, um, and they will pass it to the developer, or I pass it to me, I pass it to the developer, and the developer will actually come back with a rough idea of how much it costs. We tell the customer it will cost you this, you know, fixed price and an estimated delivery date. And when the project is delivered to the customer, again, the customer has to test because we test, but we can't, like I said, test forever. And then there's this like iteration where the, where the product is being tested. And um, if there's any bugs or any features that are missing uh, from the requirements, then they get fixed free of charge. And then when this process is finished and the customer is happy, then he gets the, the final product to actually uh, use in a real live environment or whatever, or demo. Cool. Yeah, so from... Uh, from the more 
beginner side when you're creating a strategy, I think you really have to look at what makes sense to you. Like, I think a lot of people buy a course or they buy some mentoring package or whatever, and they they say, oh yeah, I'm following this guy, and he's has you know a 60% win rate and he's making you know a hundred thousand dollars a month, but I don't understand what his strategy does. I don't understand how it works. So I, I look at them, I'm like, okay, so why are you trying to trade that? And like they don't know, right? So I think it's really important to understand. Uh, does that make sense to you? Number one, does this strategy make sense to you? Um, can you see why this strategy has an advantage? Number two, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, have you tested the strategy and have you? Um, are you excited about it? Like, I guess that's the bigger point. Uh, are you ex are you excited about trading it? Does it? You know, if you're very technical and you like to take little pieces out of the market, does it? fit with your personality type in that respect or do you like to have these you know like uh 10 pip uh, stop losses but you have like 100 pip winners um but maybe you win you know like 10 percent of the time or whatever is that more of your thing so i think that's a really important thing to look at when you're starting out and looking for a strategy well can i ask you a question here when you when you mm -hmm. edit when you help people do you get um traders that that um get a kick out of positions being open. So they feel like they have to have trades on all the time to actually have this sort of adrenaline. This is a, this is a problem I think with the algorithmic side as well is that people feel that they must have trades open all the time to have this sort of excitement in the market. Yeah, totally, totally. It's kind of that like almost gambler's mentality, right? I have to, I have to keep trading, keep trading, keep trading. Whereas if they backed off a little bit and maybe traded once a day instead of like 10 times a day, they would be yeah. way more profitable. Definitely. Yeah. Is that and something you find too? Yeah, when definitely. You, like, yeah, so people they want trading systems, but they want it to open. They want it to open so many trades. They don't realize that every time a trade opens, they're being charged commission and, and spread and stuff. And yeah. then, and then some of the best trading systems automated that only open maybe one trade a week. So the if you look at the end result at the end of the year, it's about how much net profit you've made and how much you actually risked of your main capital. That's more important than how many positions actually opened up over that period of time. So even if it's three trades, it doesn't really matter. So I find I find that that's a problem with a lot of traders. And I don't know if when you're training, you're educating traders, it's how to stop them having that sort of, you know, wanting to have so many trades all the time. Yeah, that's a tough one. I think somebody has to be willing to face the uh, facts and look at their journal and say, yeah, I'm trading too much. Otherwise, they just, they're just they in that, that, like, I have to trade, I have to trade mentality. Yeah, yeah. They're just chasing profits, right? Right, yeah, they, yeah, okay. Uh, they can probably hire my wife or my mom. They, they both like to tell me no a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> having as a, as a coach over Trade there. management service. Yeah, exactly. No. No, no, <laughs> but but mom, but baby, no, no. <laughs> and like, something you both mentioned over there is that I've seen countless, countless uh, traders just say, "Oh, I'm like, like you said, I'm following the strategy. I'm buying this robot. I, you know, I'm, I'm." And it's, uh, I guess that's part of their education is trying to find uh, a strat, uh, learn all the different strategies and find something that works for them and. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, what we, we some of the systems that we actually offer um, allow the trader to actually turn on or off certain features, so they can just have um, a Dinapoli stochastic that will open trades, um, or a certain you know you'd have like a core engine that would actually help you open the trades, but then you still decide which uh, indicators you want to use. So it has more configurable settings and stuff like that. So that helps. One thing I just want to say is um, there is people coming into the market that actually feel that an automated system will actually just print the money and um, they can just come and buy something for $50 or $100 or whatever pounds, or whatever, and they feel it will just make them 10,000 a year and they just press a button and it works. And there's a lot of people that actually do feel this way. And this is a, this is a problem really. You just got to my next point. I'm like, is there such thing as the Holy Grail? I've seen so many programs called the Holy Grail and everyone's like, yo, this is gonna work. This is gonna make tons of money. Oh, well, you already said they don't exist. What, what, what would a good system look like? Since uh, I, we both I, from Yeah, I think there are some systems that are on uh, my FX book and stuff like that. There are people that are using automated system. How much is that is automated? And how much is that as a hybrid between the trader um, helping as well I don't know but my honest opinion if there was any system any trading system on this planet that could um, make money guaranteed every year all you need to do is scale up the value and you'll just consume some you'll just make so much money so 
There isn't one. Yeah, there isn't. Otherwise, you just have a, if a trading system could print money on a regular basis, uh, every year after year after year, you just need to keep increasing. Depending on how much capital you've got, you could literally, you know, make a lot of money, make all the money. Yeah, and I, I think one important thing with my FX book, I don't know if it's like it's, I don't know if it's like that now, but in the past, my FX book could be gamed a little bit where you deposit money, and that kind of looks like a it looks like a game in the system. So you kind of ah. have to watch out for that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess in terms of um, uh, the the tr the trading, um, uh, ha uh, I'll leave that for for a, a little later down the down the road. I guess with scalability of a strategy, it might work for a certain amount of money. How does it work for a, a different amount of money? Because uh, the, one of the bigger things there's uh, there's slippage based on how big of a, a lot size you try to open up at you know you you can open up one 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 unit at a certain price but if you're trying to open up a hundred or a thousand units at a certain price you have to factor in that there's only so much liquidity in the market and you're going to get filled at certain prices so um, how do traders scale up their strategies and make them uh, durable for uh, for for growing. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Uh, from what I've seen, the guys with the bigger amounts of money, what they do is they create their own systems. So uh, like you said, if you put too much in at one price, you're going to start moving the market and you're going to get bad fills. So what they do is they create a system that um, they, they have this target price and the system fills them around that price so that they don't move the market too much. And how, how do, I guess how would someone... Uh, factor that into when they program a strategy or uh... um, Okay, so if it's an automated system then it's all it's all about drawdown really it's all about how much they're willing to risk So that's another that's that touches on another subject actually because most of our trading systems are quite conservative So we're looking at 5% or less drawdown of your capital. So at any point during that one-year period here one-year back test um, If it's a 5% drawdown, it means your balance or your equity depends which drawdown you're looking at will say 5% um, a loss. So if you had a hundred pounds, you had work that one out, five, 50 pounds, whatever, no, five pounds, <laughs> you were five pounds down. So the whole idea is if you were doing a system is to actually work out, first of all, how much capital you've got and then what drawdown you want to use, how much you want to risk. Some traders might want to actually gamble and do a 50% drawdown. So they're doing 50%, pretty much flicking a coin saying at some point, half of my money is going to be at risk during that period. So it all depends on the trader on their, and their appetite to what they want to risk. I think long term, as a long term business, like most, I'm sure most of the investment companies look at a much lower drawdown and much lower risk and much lower return as well. So but the whole idea is, I don't know how you, who you manage um, some of your traders and how you actually look at risk, you know, their risk appetite. How do you do that? Is it like, do you get traders that are quite willing to risk 25% of their money at some point? Yeah. I mean, I try to bring them in. <laughs> I think it's all about realistic expectations versus your personality, right? Yeah. Some people can do the Larry Williams where they risk a, you know, they have a 50% drawdown, right? Some people are willing to do that, but I think most people really are looking at the conservative side, kind of like how you do it, Paul, right? Like mm. they don't want to have a huge drawdown because that's psychologically dam damaging. So they're looking at a much smaller drawdown. And I have to tell them that, okay, realistic expectation is that smaller drawdown means smaller return. So yeah, um, I think that that's a key important thing to look at. Yeah, definitely. And they have a longer time in the industry as well, I think. Yeah. Because it's yeah. like if you have a if you have a higher drawdown, there's a higher chance you just keep blowing your accounts and then you stop. Uh, yeah. And also, also the way to recover from there is you got to have so many more. Uh, you can't if you lose twenty percent, you need you need to gain forty percent to get back to break even, kind of. Yeah, so yeah. The, the risk of ruin is just uh, tremendous, and I, from from a brokerage side of uh, things, uh, um, when the the clients. If they're going to be just uh, shooting from the hip, their lifespan is three months or less before they go bust and they exactly, yeah. and and they blow it. If if they're trading responsibly and uh, they're going low and slow and they cut out losers and they live mm -hmm. to fight another day, um, they're they're with you for years. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's yeah. The first part is finding out what the heck they want to do on the trader psychology point or what 
what their expectations are. Are they realistic? And um, and I oftentimes people lie to themselves. I find they just this is what I want, and this is what I want to hear, and this is this is all I want. And they, they, they and like no matter how honest you are to them about what they're getting into, they they just want to hear what they want to hear, and they're just like yeah. Hey, they want what they want. That's... I think I think most humans have this dream of being rich, and this is the problem. They come into the industry because because I understand how they feel because you you come in and you think you're going to make a lot of money. They're actually convinced that they're going to make a lot of money, and this is the problem. They don't look at it as a long term business. They look at it as I'm going to get rich fast, and this is how it's going to work. Some of them do, I suppose. But most of them, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I used to think I, I I thought opposite to the herd, but then I realized quickly I got I am. Oh, yeah. I'm stuck in the herd. Yeah. Um, how do traders go about getting a good programmer? What is the research they should do? Okay, so again, it's about reviews. It's about um, looking at reviews and feedback. Um, and it's not just the programmer. It's obviously the, there's different types of programmers. You can get somebody who's in in um, a third world country. With, limited education who self-taught programming and they'll probably do your system for five twenty dollars i think if you're i think if i was not thinking about my business and i was just somebody my advice would be if you're looking at quick and dirty and fast prototypes um you could just oh it's a tough one actually because i mean I, i'm trying i would like our, our company to actually target um people that um Okay, how can I explain this? I'm trying to explain it the best way I can. It's something like getting your hair cut. Would you, would you get your next door neighbor to get their hair cut for, you know, your next door neighbor to cut your hair for, for $5? Or would you go to a hairdresser and get it cut for $50? It's about the well, quality is, of their haircut. And how they wash your hair. And how they wash your hair. You put a bowl over your head and you just get your wife to see it. Yeah, so I think, I think it's a lot of things about the program. It's about um, how you get on with them, um, the quality of the work that you get, um, how detailed. And I think it's about... Um, the all the policies that are in place to protect you if anything goes wrong i think the whole the whole thing really so yeah, most, mostly yeah mostly so you look at obviously you look at reviews you look at the background you look at transparency in the person that you're using you look at response times that you you get response to your email within minutes not days so that's a big problem with a lot of them out there there are a lot of coders out there um, that are self-taught or one-man bands um, but again, it's like anything in the, the consumer industry. If you were to buy something, would you go to the bottom end of the market or the top end? It all depends on the customer and if they've got money to pay for the good quality stuff or they've got, or you get a low end customer that doesn't have a lot of money and they buy, buy off somebody else. Well, I know Hugh's got some experience in programming some stuff. What was, what was your experience like? Uh, I yeah, know I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't do a lot of coding myself, so I have to go find programmers. And like Paul said, you know, you're looking for reviews. Uh, referrals are always the best thing. Um, number two, are they, do they know about trading? Like there's a lot of people who can obviously code in C sharp, but do they know about trading and how trading works? That's a really, that's a really tough one. And then, um, yeah, like Paul mentioned, do they, are they responsive? Do they get back to you? Do they answer your questions specifically or do they kind of just give you general um, answers? And I think the really big one is don't take a big project with them right away. Maybe you can have a initial project that's much smaller and, uh, you know, maybe just a test project and you can give them a little bit of money and you can see how well you work with them and kind of take it from there. Good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go get down and dirty over here. What is your approach to trading? Go for it, Paul. Uh, my approach to trading. Um, Okay, so I don't trade myself. Um, the developers that we use do trade, and um, that's what they do, and they develop as well. So my role in the company is mostly sales and marketing now. So I pretty much just push the business forward with the, our products and how to make more revenue and look at different sales ven uh, venues. So myself, I don't trade. So other people do that. Uh, cool. That's why yeah, that's why you're so relaxed over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me at least, uh, it's basically comes down to um, support and resistance. It's nothing fancier than that. Um, I do look for a, a few specific patterns around support and resistance, but um, yeah, that's basically it. Simple is best. Yeah, well, so support and resistance kind of hits on uh, uh, a big thing for me. So one of the people in here asked, 
do you think Bitcoin will will go down? And uh, back in 2017, when Bitcoin hit, um, what, like 20,000 just under, uh, uh, I was like, well, Bitcoin can go back to 3,000 because based on your saying support and resistance, uh, in order for a chart to really uh, make its history and keep on moving, it, once something breaks out of an area, it always has to come back and test that area, no matter what. And and th and that's how you could, once you create those floors, the support and resistance floors, then the uh, the asset or the uh, instrument in question is able to continue on with its path. It, it took a little while for uh, Bitcoin to uh, come back from uh, three thousand and, and bust out, but. Um, based on technical uh, support resistance, uh, what goes up must come down to at least the level it broke out from before it can go back up and, and go, yeah. go you to You see that in, new, in news, re news releases as well, like a major event news release, you'll see the price get be manipulated or be moved by the news and it will go miles one way, then come back flying the other way. Then it will even up and come back mm -hmm. to where it was before until it hits the support and resistance. So mo if you look at any news release, high sort of volatility news releases, you'll see that the price... Um, kind of evens uh, equalizes out afterwards after a lot after it's taken out everyone stops and the people that have made their money it then equalizes yeah. back to the roughly where it is it might push through supports and resistance sometimes but normally goes back nothing like getting whipsawed yeah yeah, yeah. um so to answer that question uh bitcoin or whatever asset you're looking at whenever it broke out of something it, it should normally go back and test that no no one knows when it's going to go back and test that but uh, it should go back and test that. I'm, and, and my, we'll, I'm, I'm hoping it will drop again soon to buy because it will drop, I think, at some point. Well, yeah, I'm not going to have any uh, <laughs> opinion on Bitcoin. Uh, uh, and it, so and volatile. It, and, and what its future will look like. I'm not a, a crystal ball reader over there, but I'm sure there's lots of people who will comment that they know exactly where it's going to go and that, um, and that if you're not in Bitcoin, you don't know what you're doing. So... Well, <laughs> It's probably a good idea to get in there when it drops when it drops again. I think that might, if it happens. Well, that's up to that's yeah. up to <laughs> what they decide to do. Right? Um, if you're actively trading during the week, well, uh, Paul's not gonna me. be like, not not me. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing golf, yeah. Golf. Yeah. How how do you stay focused uh, uh, on your business and you know living a, living a life? How do you balance everything? Because I know when I was uh, trading, uh, I was like sleeping three hours here and then three hours there and making up six hours in between. And I was like, I felt like Kramer from Seinfeld from the one he was taking naps or something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's all about fitting the trading system to your lifestyle, right? So for me, it's trading the longer term charts, uh, mostly four hour and daily. And then uh, just checking that maybe a few times a day. And then uh, going out and doing whatever I want to do. Nice. Probably answering questions from uh, from people all day long, saying, "Hey, Hugh, what should yeah. I do? What's, what is this?" Yeah, like? or support emails and stuff like that. Yeah, supporting the community. Yeah. yeah. I guess let's uh, end off with something fun. What What do you do for fun and to de-stress from trading, programming, looking at the all those screens all day long? <laughs> Go for it, Paul. I, I salsa dance. No, no way. Cool. No, I'm only that's joking. I, no, I'm joking. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I, I got my I, wife. I'd like to try it. Really? I'd like to try it one <laughs> nice. day. No, I actually do a thing called rock climbing. Like I climb rocks. That's, mm -hmm. So where, where I am right now, it's a tiny little island off of Bodrum. And uh, it's got the best sport climbing in the world. So I just stay here and climb, really. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Uh, for me... Uh, hiking mostly, uh, oh, playing like soccer, hiking. soccer league, and then uh, I used to do some surfing, but uh, since I moved to Arizona, there's going to be not too much of that, <laughs> but uh, hopefully I can get out to LA uh, a few times a year to go surfing. Maybe Paul can give you some tips on rock climbing over there. I'm, bored, I'm yeah. actually bored of rock climbing now. I want to do rock hiking. What's the difference? <laughs> it's just, you're just walking on rock. It's different. Oh, okay. so I'm, I'm bored of climbing. No, I'd Is like that... to do something different, actually. Okay. Well, uh, fi find a, a Latina woman. She'll teach you salsa dancing. Oh, yeah, salsa, yeah. Salsa there and golf. That's, that's what I'm going to do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, 
And I guess uh, let's finish off and uh, I guess let everybody know how they can contact you for, uh, for any of the questions or needs that they might have. Okay, I'll go first then. So um, you just need to contact, you just type into Google Click Algo or you come to our website, which is clickalgo.com. Um, and then you'll come to our website and there's a contact, contact section there and you can just um, contact us and ask any questions. Yeah, for us, it's uh, tradingheroes.com and the contact form is on there and you can uh, ask any questions you have. I know everybody's asking like, what's the price of this? What's going to happen with that? Uh, so ha have fun. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have, have fun determining where the market's <laughs> going. Um, but it's been a pleasure uh, having uh, both you gentlemen here, learning about programming, learning about trading psychology, and building a strategy and uh, controlling the emotions. And uh, I hope uh, we helped uh, traders understand a little bit of where to focus because uh, the next time they're looking at their screens asking WTF is going on, uh, hopefully they have a little bit of uh, knowledge uh, to help yeah. them. And they're Definitely. not at it. They're not at it alone. We're we're all facing the same, same same battles. So yeah, yeah, right. totally. All right. Well, Thanks, nice Michael. to meet. Nice to meet you, Hugh. Nice to meet you, Michael. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah, nice to meet you, Paul. See you. Thanks, everyone. All Take right. care, everyone. Cheers, we'll see you bye in a couple bye. weeks. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Ciao. Bye. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Bye.